way? AA Lock, Dock, and Security has the right people to install and monitor your home or business. Call today for a free on-site security analysis. Call 867-1965. AA Lock, Dock, and Security, 219 Northwest 10th Street, 867-1965. All right, five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, Thursday morning. It's kind of still chilly out there. I, I hate to tell you that, but it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, wait, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> there you, are, there you are. It's a little bit chilly, but it uh, feels good. William Murray is on the phone. I, gosh, I, I feel like we've spoken to him before with the, the first book, but I'm mm-hmm. not so sure. Uh, William is the co-founder of Harvard's program on negotiation. He's one of the most influential experts on negotiation, and he's a New York Times best-selling author. I believe the first book I was reading somewhere is a is recorded required reading at some colleges, some universities. <laughs> this book is called Getting to Yes with Yourself. The first book was called Getting to Yes. But I'm curious as to why this is considered a prequel. This, yeah. this kind of book doesn't usually have the word prequel associated <laughs> with it, right? <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, so this is uh, going to be a fun and enlightening interview. And we've got a full 25 minutes with William, so good. We can really pick his brain a lot. We, when you have an expert, you got to have them on for at least a half hour. Yeah, you do. That's how it works. You do. That's the rules. W- William Urie. Good morning, William. It's a great pleasure to speak with you. And, and where are you right now? I'm in uh, Boulder, Colorado. In Colorado. Wow. And what is the temperature there? Because this is Florida. I'm supposed to be able to brag to you how warm it is, and I can't do it today. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not so warm here. It's about, about 40 degrees. So it's about the same here. I, I think the world is upside down. Yeah, we need to renegotiate with the weatherman. Yeah, that's one thing it's hard to negotiate with, Mother <laughs> Nature. Do you know, in, in negotiation in general, I just wanted to kind of start with this. I mean, we negotiate business. That That's kind of, I guess, the first place that that word is used. But then sometimes we negotiate with our family. and I, it's a, it's a, Maybe that's not the best word. Um, but do, are, the, are the techniques the same? Yeah, it's basically, you know, negotiation, the way I define it very simply and very broadly is, the act of back and forth communication. You're trying to reach agreement with the other person. You may have some interest in common, like you have an ongoing relationship with your spouse or your kids or your boss or your coworkers, and you have some interest in tension. You want it one way, they want it another. So in that broad sense of the term, you know, we're negotiating from the moment we get up in the morning to the moment we go to bed at night. We're negotiating with our two-year-olds, with our teenagers, with our parents. We're negotiating, uh, uh, and I think the, although the situations differ, and obviously every situation is different, the basic principles remain the same because we're dealing with human beings. But in this book, you're talking about negotiating with yourself. Right. Well, the thing is, uh, yeah, as, as you mentioned, you know, many, many years ago, uh, I collaborated with Roger Fisher on a book called Getting to Yes, which, uh, which was about how to, how to resolve things in a cooperative way so that both sides could you know, win, you know, so-called win-win solutions. And uh, and over the years, uh, people said, yeah, but how, how do you apply this to people who are really difficult, who don't want to negotiate, who have, you know, lots of emotion and rigid positions? And so I made a specialty over They're the called, they go, They run for Congress, I think, don't they? I think so. Right, absolutely. <laughs> you know, well, that's the thing. Conflict t- these days is a growth industry. <laughs> and, and just look at D.C. and look everywhere around the world. So... My question is, what makes it hard for people to get to yes? And what I've discovered is that as difficult as the other, as other people can sometimes be, and they can be really difficult, uh, I've found that the biggest obstacle to us getting what we want in life is actually not the other side, but the person we look at in the mirror every morning. It's, it's ourselves. Uh, we get in our own way. You know, it's, I think Teddy Roosevelt once said, you know, if you could kick in the pants the person who is responsible for most of your troubles, you wouldn't sit for a month. <laughs> and uh, Oh, I love uh, that. Well, you, you know, uh, here's a weird thing, too, and, and I'm, I'm going to name Rush Limbaugh only because I heard him say this, but I think a lot of people uh, feel this way, that compromise is, is giving in. Compromise is caving in. And, and I think compromise, you can tell me if I'm right about this, but it's got to be a part of negotiation. For sure, for sure. But the thing is, you know, there's distinctions. Let me give you a distinction here. Um, A famous story from one of the founders of uh, modern management, a woman lived in Boston at the century ago. His name was Mary Parker Follett. She she once described two 
students getting into an argument in the library because one wanted the window open and the other one wanted it closed. And they got into a big quarrel. One goes and opens the window and the other one goes and shuts it. And finally, the librarian comes over. She hears the, the, the havoc and she, she comes over and she asks the first one, why do you want the window open? He says, well, I want some fresh air. And she asks the second one, why do you want the window closed? He says, well, the draft is blowing my papers around. So then she thinks about a minute, she asks them, so how can we get you fresh air without you a draft? Well, one of them gets an idea, and they go in the next room and open the window there, thereby providing fresh air for the first person without a draft for the second. Now, in that very simple situation, think about what's going on. It's a negotiation, and uh, you start off with you know, open window, closed window. If you just went for a split the difference compromise, which is what most people think negotiation is, in other words, a half open window, right, right. you satisfy either one. Right. The, the, Good point. The, wow, I like that the illustration. The point in negotiation is to look behind the positions, the concrete things we say we want, the dollars and cents, you know, in this case, the open window, closed window, to look for what are people's real needs or interests or desires, which in this case are fresh air and no draft. And by doing that, you can come up with the equivalent of an open window in the next room. That's what we need to look for, is those, those, those solutions, those win-win solutions that are not just split the difference compromises, but are genuine, you know, genuinely meet, address the concerns of both sides. Oh, I like that. That, that was a great illustration. And, and that, that would be applicable in, in other things, too. Obviously, uh, uh, applicable in D.C., applicable in uh, the Middle East, uh, you know, applicable in uh, negotiating where you're going to go for a vacation, whether you're going to go to Florida. Or <laughs> well, and, and, but, the, but there is one stick in the mud, and it's, it is the unreasonable party. If you have an unreasonable party, yeah. like, like using the illustration you just gave, if one of those two says, that's not going to be good enough. The window has to be open in here. Let's mm -hmm. say. Right. Then, then, then you have an unreasonable one. I think uh, in in the news, somebody like ISIS would be an unreasonable one. They don't want to negotiate. Sure. But, sure. And and this is why in negotiation, one of the very first things you need to do, besides really figure out what you really want, is figure out. There's a concept we call your BATNA, which is an acronym standing for your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. It's your best course of action to pursue your interest, to satisfy your interest, if you, for some reason, cannot reach agreement with the other side. So it's your walk-away option. So, for example, with ISIS, <laughs> given that we're unlikely to reach agreement or on any kind of agreement that we would want, yeah. uh, we have to know what our BATNA is. In other words, how are we going to protect ourselves? You know, how are we going to protect our security in this particular case yeah. and, and stability in the Middle East? Uh, if we cannot reach agreement with them. But you have to have people out there for this to work to be genu gen genuinely open-minded about things because there are people out there that always say it's got to be my way or no way at all. Hmm. That's true. That's absolutely true. But you know what I've found uh, is that is that it's true. Uh, there are lots of unreasonable people out there and uh, and at the same time, what I've found is that oftentimes with patient, persistent negotiation that's skillful, uh, you can sometimes, you know, you can sometimes turn those situations around. You know, I, when, I, when I started in this uh, business uh, many, many years ago, you know, looking, you were talking about international conflicts, you know, we were looking at the Cold War. People said, you know, it's never going to turn around. <laughs> you know, it's always going to be a Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, you know, we were looking at South Africa. You know, oh, there's going to be a bloodbath there for as long as you can imagine. Look at Northern Ireland. Oh, they're so unreasonable over there. Catholics and Protestants, will be, they've been killing each other for centuries. And yet, over the years, I visited and, and was involved in each of those situations. And through the years, through patience and persistence, even you know unreasonableness was overcome and people were able to to, to find solutions to move forward and maybe uh, as you also kind of mentioned we might be the most unreasonable one to ourselves <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's so it you know we engage in the blame game we always think it's the other side that's unreasonable you know you talk to you know you get in a like i don't know if you have any friends or go, go through divorces or have difficult marriages but but you know if you talk to the husband, the wife's unreasonable. If you talk to the wife, the husband's unreasonable. And uh, and the thing is, you know, we we, we we you know we get out the we we, we engage in the blame game. Right, and right, I think right. This is where this is where we have to look and see. Um, you know, I think it was Ambrose Bierce who said, "When angry, 
you will make the best speech you will ever regret. <laughs> oh, we ever regret. Oh, I love that. We, we need to take a little break, William. Uh, we'll be right back. Getting to Yes with Yourself and Other Worthy Opponents is the book. And uh, we'll kind of really focus on the book itself. Uh, most of this first part was just kind of an introduction. William Urey, when we come back, plus Tom Schmitz is on the phone getting ready to give us an update on the Coates LPGA Golf Championship. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be sunny and pleasant today with a high of 65 to 69. Then mainly clear tonight with lows in the 40s. Tomorrow, sunshine mixing with some clouds and just a touch warmer in the afternoon, the high 68 to 72. For Saturday, a mix of sun and clouds with a pleasant afternoon, the high 65 to 69. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. All right, uh, let's see, 15, oh, gee. 15 minutes after 10 o'clock. Tom Schmitz is on the phone over at the Coates Golf Championship. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Larry. It's a chilly Coates Golf Championship for the second day in a row. Crowd dispersed this morning, of course. The chill is still in the air. But Jessica Cora, she's six under through two holes. She's your leader, tied with Stacey Lewis, and is six under through one hole. Azura Munoz, Munoz is six under through one hole as well. They can move up the leaderboard. Lexi Thompson, four under through two holes. Looks like a great day of golf out here, Larry. The sun is high in the sky. Looks for highs in the high 60s to lower 70s out here. I expect the crowd, just as yesterday, to come rolling in about 11.30, 11.45 around lunchtime. Coach Golf Championship, we're out here proudly because of Proper Tea Salon, KMF Downtown Fitness, and Regions Bank, the Raymond, Mor- the Raymond Andrews Mortgage Team at Regions Bank. Larry, I'm sorry you and Robin are stuck in a studio. It's such a gorgeous day out here. I wish everybody could enjoy the going-ons here. If you want to come out, people, it's $15 a ticket to get in for the day or $40 to take in the whole golf tournament. Larry will be checking in an hour from now again with you with an update live from the Coach Golf Championship. Back to you in the studio. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. We will be right back. Greetings, good citizens. Join Robin Hood and the Sheriff of Nottingham at the 29th Annual Hogtown Medieval Fair, January 24th and 25th and January 30th through February 1st at the Alachua County Fairgrounds. You'll find medieval merriment for the whole family. Cheer on royal knights as they joust for their ladies' honor. Watch a living chess match or enjoy performances by gypsy dancers and magicians. Then wander through the marketplace where hundreds of artisans sell their medieval wares. Come one, come all to the Hogtown Medieval Fair. All right, 17 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, uh, William Urey on the phone, and uh, the book is called Getting to Yes with Yourself and Other uh, Worthy Opponents. Uh, William, first of all, am I saying your last name correctly? Yes, you are, Yuri. That's it. Okay. Um, so give me an example of how I might need to negotiate with myself. I was trying to imagine this, uh, but I don't know that I quite grasp it. Well, here, let me give you an example. Um, a year or so ago, I was asked by, to help a, uh, an entrepreneur, a Brazilian uh, a business leader down in Brazil who had founded Brazil's largest retailer, and, uh, and he had been fighting for two and a half years with his uh, former partner over control of the company and you know law legal battles it was in the newspapers it was all over and uh, for two and a half years and when I sat down with him I said uh, tell me something uh, you know I could sense you know what do you really want you know uh, I could sense the problem wasn't just with his adversary it was that he and this is I think true for many of us we sometimes don't know what we really want. Did he want to continue the fight? You know, he was going to be chairman of the board for another eight years, or you know, or did he want to you know find a find an agreement? And I said, so what do you really want? He said, well, you know, I want my stock back at a certain price. I want the elimination of the non compete clause. He gave me you know it's real estate. He gave me about five things. I said, yeah, but you're a man who seems to have everything. What do you really want in life? How do you want to spend the next eight years of your life? And he looked at me finally and he said, you know what I want, William? I want freedom. That's what I want. I said, so what does freedom mean to you? He said, well, it's freedom to be with my family and freedom to, to uh, make new business deals. Well, once we knew that, once, we were able, once he was able to kind of get to a yes inside himself, really be clear about what he really wanted, then we're able to settle the thing very satisfactorily for both sides in four days. Uh, and he said, you know, I got everything I wanted and I got my life back. So to me, that's a good lesson of 
oftentimes we're torn in our side ourselves. Do we want this? Do we want that? Do we want to fight? You know, do, in, in a marriage wow. situation, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in, in, you know, they say in a marriage, you know, you can either choose, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? But you can't be both. Do you know what? I, I, I have a little story to tell you, and it's a, a lady who was on Wall Street, I guess making a good living from what she said. We had her as a guest. Uh, and she now paints things, I think T-shirts, mm -hmm. etc., and she sells um, sells her paintings in, in New Smyrna Beach down here in Florida. So what happened is she was working on Wall Street and then September 11th happened and she decided, you know, life can be over in a heartbeat. I'm going to do what I really love doing rather than, because even though she was making good money on Wall Street, she wasn't happy. But the thing is this, and, and I, I'm only thinking of her now um, because of what you just said, and I don't know this for a fact, but I'm wondering if maybe for years... She was thinking about doing exactly what she ended up doing because of 9-11, but she didn't, I, I don't know, that sounds to me like, because that's the way I would be. If I had, a, we've just had an, a, a young man in here who's an actor, mm -hmm. and he said he had a medical profession before that, but he always wanted to be an actor. So it must have been a hard pill to swallow to say, I'm going to give up the big paying job yeah. to do something. I mean, typically actors, unless you're John Travolta, you're not making that much money out no. of it, right? No. Right. So I mean, is, are those are those examples perhaps of of somebody would need like the lady with in New Smyrna Beach? Would she? Yeah, absolutely. That those are you know everywhere. Every one of us, uh, if you look inside, you know we're you know we're torn. We're here or there. The other thing is you know every one of us we're you know human beings we're reaction machines, and we we react in ways that often don't serve our true interests. I mean you know. Let me just take an example. Suppose you know you're working and you get an email from a colleague and you got left out of an important decision and you're ticked off, you're frustrated, you're irritated. So, what do you do? You, it's very tempting. You just compose an email and you get the satisfaction of not just hitting the reply button, you hit the reply all button. It goes <laughs> out to the entire organization. Yeah, right. You know, uh, you know, there's there's the key, the foundation of successfully getting to yes with yourself is the ability. I, I call it going to the balcony. It's almost like you're negotiating on a stage and uh, with the other person. Part of your mind goes to a mental or an emotional balcony overlooking that stage where you can kind of get some perspective and ask yourself, what's really important here? Keep your eyes on the prize. It's a place of calm. And that's the place where we negotiate in our own interest. Because oftentimes I find, you know, we get into these arguments and it's about point scoring. It's not about getting the problem solved. Well, I can, I can really relate to this. Um... Uh, so, so, but how do you do, I mean, gosh, I mean, aside from just saying, I mean, in the actor's case, he said, well, look, my whole life is going to be as a pharmacist or whatever he was doing. Yeah. And he didn't want it. He didn't want his whole life to be there. And in this woman's case, 9-11 was the wake up call. And so she's now doing what she loves doing. You know, mm -hmm. the, the money is not the issue. This, she's, yeah. But she's successful in her own way. Um, d d so d does is the book written for the the person trying to figure out their own personal lives, or is it does it still connect yeah, to the written, uh, to the business life? No, it's written for personal, professional, any any kind of any situation because it's it's basically saying, look, uh, you know, we want to be happy, right? And we want to get along with the people around us. We want to have healthy relationships. We want to reach good agreements. And if we want to get to yes with others. The first person we need to get to yes with is ourselves, because we're often the, the biggest block. We don't see it. We're sometimes blind to it. But, but if we can just do a little bit of inner homework beforehand, homework with ourselves, with the person on this side of the table, yeah, yeah. that's going to be a lot easier to deal with the person on the other side of the table. Because what happens is, uh, is you know, we, we, you know, we blame the other side instead of taking responsibility for what's our part. And that's where we have our power. That's where we can change things. Yeah. But you, you also have to take into consideration, though, the other people that will be affected by the one individual making some kind of decision, especially if there's an immediate family there. Hmm. Right. Well, that's the whole thing. To me, you know, the, actually, interestingly enough, the biggest one of the biggest beneficiaries of us being able to get to yes with ourselves is is the larger whole it's the family or it's the workplace or it's the community because it, you basically it, when you if you get to yes with yourself you're going to feel a little more generous because you've taken care of yourself your own needs you're going to feel more generous towards people around you and you're going to 
you're going to be a better a better family member, a better a better community member. And you also address the issues of instead of a person looking at it, what's in it for me, what's in it for others, because right. that's, that's extremely it. important. That's absolutely it. And you know what I've found? I mean, it's the paradox. Like the key in getting along with others, I find is to listen to them. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's, it, it's the cheapest concession you can make in a negotiation. It costs you almost nothing, and it means everything to them because it signals respect. But it, we find it very hard to listen to people. Why? Because we haven't listened to ourselves first. <laughs> if, we, if we can just spend a little time listening to ourselves, you know, quieting our minds, creating a little bit of space there, then it's a lot easier to listen to other people. And so if you can take care of yourself, it, it helps. You know, it's like on the <laughs> airplanes, you know, where they say, fasten your seatbelt before you fasten the seatbelt of the person next to you. You know, if you can get to yes with yourself, you're going to find it easier. You're going to be more altruistic. You're going to take better care of people around you. You know, one thing that we see a lot of is authors. We see a lot of authors. And um, 12 years ago, when we first started doing this show, there weren't as many self-published authors as there are now. And an author is a perfect example of somebody who hopes that somebody will say yes, that somebody being a publisher but when there's a self-publishing technology now, <laughs> you, you can say yes to yourself, but you might not be ready for yes. There's a, there's a good reason why sometimes, well, we've had our share of, of really very, very good self-published books, so I don't want to cut that down. Yeah. But I think the, the publishers who reject the book um, outright, I mean, that don't give any feedback, that, I don't know if that happens either, ever, but do you know what I mean? I mean, sometimes if, sure. you, if you give yourself the, the go-ahead to do something, maybe you're really not ready to do it yet. Well, yeah, but th that's why you have to kind of take a careful look. And even you know, even in those situations, you may not have a publisher, but you have friends and colleagues around you who can help you know be a kind of focus group for you and give you feedback about whether or not you're ready for prime time. Yeah, yeah. And there's always it. Each uh, generation is always a, uh, a mirror from for the generation before it because you still have a, 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 a lot of radicals. You still have a lot of givers. You still have a lot of takers, and they have to find that balance. And if they if and 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 usually they don't listen to the generation before them, and they seem to make the same mistakes. That's true, and that's why this work is so important. Because if we can do this work inside of ourselves then, you know, we're going to be better parents and we're not going to just pass on our problems to the yeah, next really. generation. So did you, have a, did, you have to ha did you have something you had to tell yourself yes about? Oh, absolutely. I, well, I mean, for example, uh, w w w one example I give in the book was um, uh, my daughter, uh, who's now 16, uh, Gabby, was born with a lot of medical problems. She's had like 15 major surgeries, huge. Oh. And, um, and she, well, first of all, my wife and I had to you know, we're dealing, we're negotiating with doctors and nurses and insurance companies for life, and it's very easy for us to kind of fall into the blame game. You know, it's their fault, whatever it is, or blame mm -hmm. ourselves. But we had to learn to take responsibility to get to yes with ourselves. To, and then we found that it actually went easier, uh, much easier with others, and we were able to to help her much more. And she's come out amazing. She, uh, she, you know, she always wanted to be. <laughs> Gabby always wanted to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. You know, so she, she was a kid. She did the longest hopscotch course. <laughs> she tried to, <laughs> she tried to put on most socks on one foot. But anyway, a year ago, <laughs> she said, you know, I want to do uh, to be the longest. I don't know if you know an exercise called the plank. It's a kind of yeah. a abdominal exercise. You know it. You lie down. You put yeah, your, yeah. Your, your elbows on the ground. You try to hold your body state. Well, I can do it for about a minute. I don't know how long you can do it for, Larry, but. <laughs> I don't anyway, think I can do it. Gabby <laughs> sent away, and it was the the woman's world record was forty minutes. Wow! Uh, she, she said you know, she started training. She started training, 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 and she wanted to do it on her birthday at her birthday party. So, at her birthday party, lo and behold, uh, you know, we had the cameras for you know evidence and everything, and she went for an hour and twenty minutes. And if you look in the Guinness Book of wow. World Records 2015, Gabby Yuri's there. And in fact, she did a TED Talk, which you can kind of see, and uh, wow. describing. But she got to guess with herself. You know, she, she does, she's not a victim. She doesn't feel sorry for herself. She, ma she makes the best of every day. Wow. Yeah, I saw, I saw Jimmy Fallon doing the plank with uh, that supermodel. That's the wife of Tom Brady, I think. Uh-huh. What's her name again? 
Oh, I, I can't remember. She's got an exotic name. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have a copy of the book, Getting to Yes with Yourself by William Urey. Call me if you want the copy that he sent to us. You can have the copy we have. Uh, the rest of us have to buy it. Where do we get the book, William? You can get the book uh, anywhere in bookstores, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Getting to Yes with Yourself. Or if you just want more information about it or about negotiation generally, you can go to my website, which is just William U R Y. Dot com. Okay. Uh, very, very motivational. Thank you, William, for being on the air with us today, and uh, definitely come back anytime. Great, Larry. Well, listen, I want to wish all the listeners all the much success in getting the yes with yourself and with others around you. Great way to end it. Thank you so much, William. We'll Great. be Thanks. right back. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A deadline come and gone in an ISIS hostage situation. The militant group threatening to kill a Jordanian hostage unless Amman frees a woman jailed for being part of a deadly attack. Sajida Al-Rashawi. Amman says it's willing.